Hi, welcome back to Me and Mon Ami. Now, about seven weeks ago, I decided to buy a 3D printer and see if I could teach myself to design and print 3D parts for our Citroen Ami. This is what happened. So, if you're a, a regular viewer of the channel, uh, or you in fact own or are hoping to uh, own a Citroen Ami, then you'll know that this lovely little quadricycle is fantastic, but it is, um, it's basic, it's cheap, and it has um, quite a number of, well, let's be generous and call them quirks, uh, that sort of need solutions. Um, amongst these quirks are the fact that where the door straps, the door handles pull, uh, you have a big gap, so that if you're out in the cold, the wind blows in. Similarly, right underneath where that door handle is, there is a, a, a hole about this big in the design. And again, the cold air absolutely blasts through. Um, if you were unfortunate enough to get one of the early version of uh, this car, which is what we did, uh, for example, you, you didn't get a diffuser on the um, uh, heater and the fan at the front. Net result, of course, you get the, the fogging issue. So there are lots of things that need little solutions. And it's not just things that need solutions, because if you were to buy this, uh, this quad without, say, the orange kit, as they used to call it, which was about another 250 quid, well, not only do you not get these panels that go in the front dash, uh, board, but you don't get the bag hook. Now you might be able to survive without these panels, but I have to say the bag hook is very useful. Uh, and it's quite steep to pay sort of 200 euros plus to buy one uh, when you don't want the rest of the stuff. So there are lots of little areas that are problematic. Similarly, when you, you're sort of trying to pull the handles, they've got these very innovative sort of sports car uh, handle system for, for opening the door but sometimes it's quite difficult to get your old arthritic fingers in them. So there are all kinds of things that will benefit from an upgrade. And of course, uh, 3D printing firms have come along, but I decided I would try and do it myself. Um, now, I've got to tell you, I knew absolutely nothing about 3D printing beyond the fact that our lovely friend uh, Moke in uh, Pimok in, uh, in Thailand, who you may have seen on some of the, the videos over Christmas, runs a very small 3D printing business where he makes uh, these wonderful miniature iPhones, miniature iMacs, uh, miniature technology devices for dolls' houses. But he knew about 3D printing. So when we were there and I was convalescing with my uh, uh, various illnesses in Thailand, uh, he introduced me to his 3D printers. Now, I was completely mesmerized by this because I don't know about you, but I just could not get my head around. How do you print 3D? How can you possibly print a, a door handle uh, or a doorstop or, or somebody's head or a whole car? It just didn't, it didn't add up to me. Um, anyway, he explained a little bit about it and he told me that basically all you have to think of is that the print the printer just prints in layers. So if you are printing a door wedge, say, and it has 124 layers, then it just does one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers, etc., until eventually you have a plastic wedge. Um, and you do this by, by putting filament into the machine. Anyway, I came back home uh, intrigued, but not a little terrified. And then I pressed the button on ordering uh, a Flash Forge Adventurer 4 printer. Uh, I actually, at the time, wanted to buy a, a, the, the latest thing, which was this Bamboo Labs uh, printer, but it was quite a lot more expensive and uh, there was a bit of a backlog on, on order. And I just thought, okay, I'm gonna go in the middle ground and hope that I'm not making a terrible mistake, just a moderate mistake. So anyway, this uh, giant package duly arrived two days later from Amazon. It was quite uh, heavy. Um, it's an enclosed printer that I went for, not the open one, because I kind of figured that here is very dusty and damp and, and, and we could have all kinds of issues. Um, and I set about trying to, uh, to set this thing up. Now, part of the reason I got the Adventure 4 was that it claimed to have a very easy setup. Some of them you have to assemble yourself in sort of kit form. Uh, and that really terrified me. Some of them, you actually print off some of the parts that you then stick on the printer. 
Um, so, uh, which I'm sure is fun if you've got a bit of experience. So anyway, um, got this thing out of the packet. Uh, basically, all I had to do was set up the, the bed leveling, which uh, is, is make sure that the instructions that are coming through from the, the computer brain to the print nozzle uh, are, are properly adhered to because the bed is level and, and it, can, it can produce the right result. So I got that set up and I uh, uh, then had to face the prospect of, uh, well, how could I possibly design anything? Well, I hadn't a clue how to design in three dimensions on my iPad. Uh, and I realized that wasn't going to happen instantly. Um, but what I did do uh, was uh, talk to Pimok in Thailand, whose brother, luckily and wonderfully, just happens to teach three-dimensional design. And so he uh, very kindly uh, designed me some solutions to these various holes and uh, things, uh, and then sent them over as um, STL files. Um, now, uh, that should have been very simple. Uh, it wasn't because it took me quite a while to understand that I had to then put this STL file into uh, what they call the slicer software of the printer, which is basically uh, the proprietary slicer that works with the FlashForge Adventure 4 and, and turns the STL file into something it can then print. Um, so once we'd resolved some of those issues, I uh, set about attempting uh, to print these solutions. Uh, and to be honest, it went far better uh, than I could have ever expected. To begin with, I had a few problems with trying to get the speed right and the temperature right, and that's just a little bit fiddly. You've got to, you've got to work out whether you're melting the plastic at the right level, whether the, the print is going at the right speed, because otherwise you get stringing and all kinds of things like this. But anyway, uh, cut a long story short, I set it on printing some things. And, uh, well, these are the results. Uh, I think the first thing I got it to print was... Um, the solution for the door strap hole uh, and I'd, I'd done this one in white because you can probably see it clearly but obviously in reality I think we, we ended up doing a black one um, and you can see this the door strap pulls through here this pushes into the uh, door and lo and behold voila you no longer have a draft so that was solution number one and that worked really well Solution number two that he came up with in my little box of plastic was um, the, the draft excluder. Uh, and this was a very simple design. Uh, and he came up with this that you just literally push into the hole. It clips in with these uh, and it's held in. He also did me a version with sort of a slider on, but I haven't actually quite managed to get that design to work yet. But anyway, these two things I was very excited by. Um, I then decided to think, to, to sort of look on the internet and see what, what was out there that was already designed. Because you can go on websites like uh, Thingiverse, Thingiverse, uh, and there are already designs for things and you can download them. Now, providing you're not selling these things, uh, the copyright is fine and you can, you can send the... Uh, the designer a fiver or something like that um, and I uh, set it on designing a bag hook for the Citroen Amina. Now this was quite a big build so uh, we, we went out uh, we went out for about four hours uh, and I thought well I don't know what's going to happen we'll leave it going. Now when I came back it was a quite surreal moment because I remember turning around to Mr Boo and saying this is like that moment when you're a kid and you've got a gerbil and you go out and when you come back, you realize the gerbil's given birth and you never even knew it was pregnant. Because lo and behold, inside the printer was this. And I have to say both of us, even the cynical Mr. Boo was absolutely blown away by this because it felt like magic. You know, these little parts, we'd watch them be made. Um, so so it, was, it was sort of fascinating, but uh, the, it had happened in front of us, this happened while we were out, the gerbil gave birth. And it produced this, and this is a, a, a bag hook for a Citroen Ami. Uh, it's strong, it's, the finish on it is really good. I mean, like all 3D printers, I think you can 
if you look up close you can see it's 3d printed as opposed to made in a mold um, but really and truly this is is was well this made me very excited i then went on the thingiverse uh, and found somebody else's design for a diffuser uh, to put on on the the front of the me to try and uh, dissipate the air it had to be printed in two halves because um uh, our bed of our printer isn't isn't wide enough to print it as a solid uh, printed this off and it works perfectly it really does uh, I'd quite like these end bits to, to point up a bit more to the side windows, uh, but it's it's a vast improvement on what we had, which was nothing. Um, I then uh, have been having a problem for absolutely ages in the gym with my AirPods, my left one, when I grimace, when I do some really big muscle work. Uh, this left AirPod just falls out continually. I've tried every different size of silicon that Apple made, nothing would work. So I was looking on Amazon thinking I'm going to have to buy something that clips this thing in my ear. And then I thought, I wonder if there's anything on the thingiverse. Lo and behold, somebody had come up with a design for two little grommets. I don't even see those. Um, there they are. They printed in about two minutes. I put them on and I have to say it works perfectly. So rather than have to spend sort of 15 quid on Amazon and with all the environmental damage of postage and sending, uh, sending stuff back and forth, you can do this at home. Now, of course, I can hear you scream, yes, but what about all this plastic waste? And yeah, it isn't perfect. There is plastic waste going on here. There's no question. But you are not doing the transportation thing and you are making things to order. Um, so I think there is a bit of an offset there. I don't know what a plastic offset is, but I've just invented that phrase, plastic offset. So by this point, I'm going, this is amazing. We This thing prints stuff, and I, I couldn't stop printing. I mean, I, I downloaded a marvellous device uh, from the Thingiverse. This, I don't know if you can see that, this, I put my toothpaste tube through here, and it enables me to squeeze the last drop of the toothpaste out. So again, how much money am I saving by having a toothpaste squeezer that I would never have bought? Uh, and, uh, you know, it's... Um, Again, I'm wasting, I'm wasting less packaging of toothpaste because I'm using less toothpaste tubes because I'm getting more out of them. I'll leave that with you. Um, I, I also downloaded somebody's design of a Citroen Ami to make this little key ring and I thought that was quite fun. Anyway, all of that. But the next stage for me had to be, can I come up with my own designs? So I set about trying to learn 3D design. Uh, it is a bit complicated and fiddly to start with. It's a bit like learning Photoshop. Uh, it's quite annoying. Um, and a lot of the programs like Shaper 3D for the iPad, which is what the one I really wanted, are very expensive. If you're listening to this Shaper 3D, we would love to do a review of Shaper 3D software, uh, but we can't afford it. Maybe you could send us a subscription. Um, but um, I then discovered a program called Tinkercad and Tinkercad is free it's the oldest uh, free to to free to air software I was gonna say but you know what I mean uh, and it's 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 quite simple it's quite intuitive uh, and involves shapes and you can just make things so I set about trying to make a me and mon and me key ring um, well, to begin with, I have to confess, I nicked somebody else's design, which was Citroen's own, uh, and I made a solid Ami key ring. Uh, and I showed this to somebody and they said, oh, it's a bit solid. I quite like it solid, but I, um, not everyone wants something solid in their pocket. So then I thought, can I make it in a, a different material? So I went from this hard PLA, PLA, technical term, to making the same thing in um, TPU, which is a more flexible material. Um, and if I can find it, I'll show you. But, oh, here it is. There you go. And there it, it is in black. I've not done it in two colours yet, but um, that's a flexible TPU and that's very, very strong. Um, but then I thought, can I do a me and mon me one? Well, I came up with this one, white on black, me and mon me. That's again rigid. Um, and then I went for it in TPU and this is two colour TPU so this is a flexible key ring and I can uh, show you that I've had this on my keys for the last three weeks uh, and 
it hasn't dropped to bits uh, and it hasn't broken again as with all 3d printing it is not perfect in the sense that you know it's it's each one is slightly different but that's nice isn't it individual um so we printed 3d key rings i even printed a, a a name for mr boo for his seat in case he forgets who he is but you know that that was just for fun i printed the other day i, I wanted some lens caps for my gopro there was a design on the thingiverse i just printed them uh three lens caps cost nothing uh, they were manufactured while we were having our breakfast and there's something quite satisfying I have to say about the gerbil being downstairs producing this stuff I get really excited I go is it there is it there yet is is, is my is my cake ready um, I can tell I'm a bit of a child at heart so what I would say to you is that if you're interested in 3d printing I absolutely think it's possible to learn it and I learned the whole thing from the internet I didn't do really any science at school I'm I'm not that got that kind of brain um, uh, it, it is possible to learn it from from videos on YouTube if you have enjoyed this video please give us a like please give us a comment please think about buying us a coffee and remember everyone from me and Mon and me stay charged bye <laughs>